Hello, and welcome to this special Halloween edition of Hi, I'm Jason with Jason Pollock. I am not Jason. Joining Jason today are two of the Cenobites from Clive Barker's cult classic franchise, Hellraiser. Straight from the darkest depths of your nightmares, Barbie Wilde and Simon Bamford. Now, the man you haven't been waiting for, Jason Pollock! Hello, welcome to another episode of Hi, I'm Jason. The reason we call it Hi, I'm Jason is because nobody knows who I am, but now you do. And before we get started, I want to give a shout out to my co-host, my musical, uh, my band leader, my producer, the guy I could not do this without, Justin Gonzalez. Hello, hello, Jason. This is this is awesome. Okay, so everyone this week has been watching a countdown that we've had, where we have been trying to have them guess. We were going to have folks from a classic Halloween film, and we've got two of the greatest right here. I am so excited. It took a lot. I had to use this to get to some of them. <laughs> I actually thought you were you just you said the classic Halloween film, and I have I hate to tell you I'm not changing hey. the current. Be careful, <laughs> <laughs> Simon Bamford and Barbie Wilde, everybody. Hello. For those of you who Sorry. don't know and watch us for the comedy solely, Simon is a Shakespearean actor who is known for Butterball in Hellraiser. This guy. <laughs> who actually looks like me if I shave my head and let the jowls grow a little longer. And Barbie Wilde is an 80s icon known for Hellraiser 2 and Markambi and Wise. Butterball stuck. Markham. Markham and Wise. I don't, well, you know, I told one of our listeners that she said, who's your next guest? I told her, I told her, and she sent me a video of putting on the Ritz. Oh, brilliant. All but, right. I have more hits for that than virtually anything else other than being in a car and, and singing a song with Dennis Leary. That, that had a lot of hits on, on T, but it, it's called the asshole song. Is it okay to um, say things like, but that, can we have not have a picture of me? <laughs> I'm, wor I, I, I'm working on it, Barbie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> for those of you listening at home, I we, we, we've never had these kind of technical issues before, but Justin's in a church right now. And considering who our guests are, it's probably why it's not cooperating. That's me. That's J J Jesus is not happy. <laughs> I apologize for the mask. It's not because of COVID, although I know you're in the States. Um, it's because my dogs just let one drop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to put this picture up. This is me as an 80s icon. I love, I have an autographed photo of you dressed like that. Oh my God! You actually so have we met. We have met. We in have real met. Life. Justin, can you move the picture? <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> Work with me here. We can Jason, see the makeover. There it is. <laughs> the bald is pre makeover, and uh, I. Thirty years later. <laughs> no, it's the picture is going to pop up thirty years later. Yeah. <laughs> I think Jesus, you know, I'm starting to, this is terrible. We should have mentioned this, but you know, of course I do recognize you. Where, where did we meet? I was fortunate enough to take you to the home of the actual Cenobites. I drove you and Ashley Lawrence to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> classy, classy. Woo! Yes. There I am. Remember? That baseline, wish I had that. You're in Europe, Ashley's in California, and you've never seen a Walmart, so I had the pleasure of taking you there. Are you and sure it was in Target? No, I'm positive it was Walmart because- All right, okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. We have to make a pilgrimage every time we're there. We have to go to Walmart, we have to go to Target. I remember you bought a shirt for your husband. Oh, whoa, that's a while ago, huh? Yeah, it was, it was. It was in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Oh, it's my first Monster Mania, 2008. First Monster Mania. That's where we met Simon. And my friend Lindsay and I talked to him about our love of, ser not our love of serial killers, our fascination of serial killers, we should say. That, that's really funny. Did I buy that shirt? 
You did. You you bought a machine. You did your purchase from Walmart. Yeah, didn't it? I don't think he was overwhelmed by it, actually. <laughs> did, did I keep trying to get him into it. color, but he, he just, you know, black. Show him a colored dress, and he goes, oh, it would be so much nicer black. You know, so that's that. That's why I'm back in black. It was a, it was a bowl. Hey, it was a bowling shirt. It's, I remember. <laughs> we, I can't believe I remember this. That's incredible. We and this is Ashley actually said, um, I got to go to Walmart for Purell. And I went, what's that? And that's why, a Purell? Purell, Purell. Purell. Yeah. Plural is adding an S to a noun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think Chlorel is actually a feminine hygiene product. No, it's, <laughs> it's hand sanitizer, the thing that we're using to dry our hands up now as we speak. Yes. And we should mention that we're probably having You're technical saying. problems because Justin is in a church. <laughs> yes, he's talking, he is. He's talking to two demons of hell. <laughs> and I'm As he, here, the reason he has a black tie is he's probably just been to a funeral. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm preparing for my own. <laughs> Simon, do you do musical theater or just? I have I have done quite a lot of musical theater in the past. I haven't done any recently, but yes, uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Um, I did I did a uh, fiddle on the roof with with uh, Topo, which was quite fun. Oh, that's Whoa! great. Whoa! Oh That's my awesome. God! Sorry, I had no idea. That is fascinating. Wow. Well, in so my cool. my early career, I thought that's where I was headed. The musical comedy. I I was the understudy for all the parts in the Apple Tree. Did the um um oh God the main movie of it with with uh, what's her name? It's nicer with nicer niece. The boyfriend. I the same Bleecker Street. Um, that was interesting. I, I thought that's how I was going to go. And then I moved to England, became a mime artist. And then a few years later, there I am. So, yeah, so I found out something really interesting. Barbie, I found out something really interesting. I raised the musical at one point. Hey, that, we're that waiting for that. That would have been amazing. Yeah. You're perfect for that. Barbie, I saw that you were the first classically trained robotic mime to appear in a Bollywood movie. I was. You know, I was, asked, I, I was talking to Justin about mime and said, I wonder if there was a first classically chained robotic mime in a Bollywood movie that's been noted. And you are her. <laughs> well, I, I made that up kind of, but from what I could <laughs> gather, the, the, the producer was the Warren Beatty of India. Yeah, he wrote, produced, starred in these things. His name was Feroz Khan. And he told me this was the first time they'd ever used robotic um, uh, mime dancing in a Bollywood movie. So he would know, I would have thought. And, <laughs> would um, know. So you, that is you. You're, you should be in the Guinness Book for this. <laughs> Maybe I should. Um, no, but it was- Make a phone I, call. I had a brilliant, brilliant time in India. It was a it was, um, wonderful place, very gracious, adorable people. Of course, they have a, a industry that's bigger than Hollywood, and um, you know it was very enjoyable as I roboted away. Oh, ow! Can't do it anymore very well. But um, in India, it was called Jambaz, the movie. Is it available streaming or otherwise? I don't Has know. Asked that in years? I've got the VHS of it. <laughs> I think I picked it up. Um, but I never, I've never looked. But I suppose if you go to Apple uh, iTunes India, you know, it's, it might be there. It's a classic. Is um, it? Oh, the other guy that's in it is hugely famous because I can't remember his name. Oh, Slumdog <laughs> Millionaire guy, right? Yes, thank you. Slum, Slumdog Millionaire guy. Yeah. Anil Khan. Oh, I remembered his name. He That's was impressive. very, very handsome. <laughs> and Simon, you were a Shakespearean actor. I was reading you did King Lear when Clive I, Barker I, discovered you. Yes, I was doing a production of King Lear and Clive came to see it with um, some others of the dog company, which was the fringe company that Clive was 
uh, had founded in London at the time. And he asked to meet me and um, invited me to join um, the dog company, um, which I did. Um, the, the other Shakespearean connection I have is I did a, a show, I don't know if you have it in the States, called The Complete Work of William Shakespeare Abridged. I've heard oh, of that. Yes, I yes. love that. It, I it, saw that at the Criterion Theatre in London. It was, at, it, you were, was that you? I, no, I did a world tour of it. <laughs> oh, oh, right. Yeah, That's yeah. impressive. I mean, <laughs> I was, it I'm was glad. Really I... hard. It was really hard. So the, Act 2 is all based on Hamlet. So we do Hamlet in 20 minutes and then we do Hamlet in five minutes. And a great story oh, that came out of that. And then we do Hamlet in, in one minute. And then at the very end, we do Hamlet backwards. So it's Shakespearean language said backwards. It's almost oh. impossible to do. It was really, really hard. But my, my <laughs> character um, was supposed to play Ophelia. Um, and was very upset that the other two characters decide that there's not enough between the three of us for me to play Ophelia. So we pick somebody from the um, from the audience to play Ophelia, who I don't like immediately because they've taken my role. Um, <laughs> and uh, when we were in Egypt, we were playing huge, great big corporate events. And um, I went and sat on the, the table before the, the show started with some very important people, but I didn't know who they were. And when I sat down, um, this gentleman leaned over and said, oh, you weren't here earlier, were you? Um, are you one of the actors? And I said, well, yeah, well, I am, but now I've told you that I am gonna have to kill you. And everybody <laughs> at the table went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, that's a bit strange. Anyway, this chap kind of laughed and said, oh, well. I think it's a little bit severe. Maybe uh, you could just maybe cut out my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> that was that. Anyway, from the interval, the, um, the director rushes backstage and said, you just threatened to kill the Prince of Egypt. To oh, my face. God. <laughs> and if that, no. If that wasn't bad enough, come act two. The three of us chat and we say, who, who should we pick on for the Ophelia role? And there's this uh, American lady who's having an awful lot of fun, obviously had a, quite a few um, vinos. So we thought we decided we're going to pick on her. So we do. We drag her up on stage. She's having a great time. But my character doesn't like her. So I'm calling her a bimbo and a lot worse and saying she can't act and generally being nasty to her. And it turns out <laughs> she's the prince's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> So oh I consulted God. two of the Egyptian royal family in the space of one day. But wow, that's an accomplishment. I have both my hands as well. <laughs> so so I, I wonder to them, which was more terrifying, your role in Her uh, Hellraiser or the fact that uh, you've terrorized them as a Shakespearean actor? <laughs> I, think, I think they were generally having a good time. I'm not sure they knew I was in Hellraiser, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I was it wouldn't before have... Hellraiser or after Hellraiser? It was after, right? Oh, after, yeah. It was only about eight years ago. Oh, my God, this is recent. Oh. I didn't know they had any princes left. No, nor did I. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's a transition, though. So you did a, a theater company with Clive Barker. He didn't just see you as the fool in King Lear and say, I want him as with makeup. As no, but it, it, interestingly, um, when, when it got to Nightbreed, the character that I play in Nightbreed to, is very, very similar to The Fool, but this time to Doug Bradley's Lylesburg. So Lylesburg rules the, the underground place at Midian, and my character is very much the kind of the sidekick to him, so very much the, ki the fool to his King Lear. So uh, definitely it was all going through Clive's head at the time. Oh, there is a Shakespearean influence, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. But no, yeah, no, uh, no, uh, I, I, uh, we, we kind of uh, went our separate ways because the trouble with French theatre is it doesn't pay anything. And uh, eventually all young actors realised that you do actually have to earn money to make a living. So we, we disbanded the company and um, I, I just ran Carl Clive, Clive out the blue a couple of years later to see what he was up to. And um, he was just uh, putting Hellraiser together. So he asked me if I wanted to play a monster. Wow. And you were perfect as that monster. <laughs> <laughs> actually, 
Actually, Simon, I've I've worked really hard on this. I do uh, I do an impression of your character. Please. So. <clears throat> <laughs> the mouth. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't see the tongue action. You, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, Simon, you just made my day. I, I was I was praying that you were going to laugh at that. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the animation perfect. <laughs> I just I just needed the glasses, that was all. Yeah. <laughs> Barbie, so, how did you get cast in the second one? You were um, obviously better than the first <laughs> Senate female Cenobite. Oh no, I, I think from what I could understand, the first Cenobite was uh Grace Kelly. Went, she went downhill. Barbie, yeah, yeah. And she went back to Scotland and said she'd never come back. I think oh. she didn't like, the, from what I've heard, she didn't like the makeup very much. The whole makeup process, four hours, half an hour to get in the costume. Oh. So um, I got a call from, um, oh, I can't remember the casting director's name, and went to this big black house in Earl, Earl's Court and spoke to Tony Randall. But I almost didn't go, as I've said many times, simply because the first film disturbed me so much. And I hated mask work, and I thought I was going to be playing Chatterer, which scared the poop out of me. I thought he was really scary. And I thought, oh, well, I don't know if I want to do this, um, being in a horror movie. And uh, my friend Jeff from Lancashire, Bur Barnsley in Lancashire, I think, said, oh, go on, Bobby, doing horrible Yorkshire accent. I can't do it. You know, 20 years from now, they'll be writing books about you. Barbie Wilde, queen of the B movies, you know. And I <laughs> Oh, well, I might as well go. And I just thought my, my eclectic career had already worked for Michael Winner, and that was a bit of a horror show, So doing Death Wish 3. So um, I went and met Tony Randall, and I knew what a Cenobite was, and it corrected him a couple times, which you don't do when you're talking to directors. But I got the job. I think it was because I was a classically trained mime, and, and um, Clive was very interested in mime, and they say that mime artists are much more patient and can take, you know, the tons of makeup and stuff. Cause I actually went up for the part of the lead female ape in Greystoke. Cause they all those, I those remember that movie. had mime artists inside of them. I didn't wow. get the part <laughs> because as tiny I, as I was, they had wanted really tiny people, but also you would have been shooting in Kenya in 100 degree heat oh, inside a fuzzy cool. costume. So I think I, I, I dodged the bullet on that one. But supposedly that's why they said, oh, my artists are good at this kind of thing. And unfortunately, this my artist wasn't very happy with sitting there for, you know, hours. <laughs> You just had a head put on, right? Who me? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Just, so I, just I stuff. foam latex. That, you see, that would have probably freaked me out. But I just had all this stuff glued to my skin, and the first time they took it off, my skin was all pink and rosy. And I went, "Oh, my skin, skin's all pink." And they said, um, "Oh yeah, that's called that's oxygen starvation." <laughs> so <laughs> it was safe. Sorry. So it was safe. That was sarcasm. It was safe. 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 safe? <laughs> oh, oh, I, I know, maybe it explains a lot about so my weird well, you look at your skin brain. now, it's luminous. Your skin is radiant right now. Thank you, darling. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Simon, well, by I'm the way. Surprised. I, I mean, I'm just looking at this sort of sort of witchy character with the demon horns in the thing. Those, so. are, those are adorable. <laughs> well, it's because I can't do anything with my hair. I haven't had a haircut in eight months. You know? It works. You know, everybody else, of course, knew Clive. Everybody else knew each other. So I was sort of the new kid in the block, you know, along with Ken Cranham, of course, who, who he wasn't in the first one. But I kind of um, blew my meeting, first meeting with him because he, I came in and he was on the phone to his wife in full channered makeup. And I, I don't know what possessed me, but I walked over and I said, hi, hi, Ken, my name's Barbie. Do you want to get married and have babies called Pepper and Skipper? 
<laughs> and that would be funny, maybe, to an American actor, but they didn't have Barbie dolls. In, in, in England, it was Cindy, Cindy dolls. And he was like, I'll call you back, darling. I'm, this actress is talking at me. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> but we're friends now. He, he gave me for being an a-hole. <laughs> First impressions. Of course, I have to also point out, I was in full Cenobite makeup as well. So he just saw this bald babe with blue lips coming at him. So, on, long gone were the days when actors could pick up little props. Did you ever get anything, Simon? No, because we never knew if they'd finished filming, did we? We always, well, we might need you back again next week. And you think, well, if you take some essential prop, then you've kind of screwed everybody, haven't you? So, uh, yeah. no. I, I did get the head from Mrs. Wiltshire, um, but I knew that they'd finally finished with that. So, that's yeah. Oh, you have the head? Yeah, I have her, the whole prosthetic head. Wow. Wow. And I have time, to say, I I'll hope, be putting, I hope. Be putting it on and I'll be going to the front door going, Grandpa. <laughs> Listen, anybody who hasn't seen Amazon Prime's Dark Diddies Presents, Mrs. Wiltshire, you have to see it because Simon is brilliant in it. Right. It's a tour de force of acting. Dark Diddies <laughs> Presents? Dark Diddies yeah. Presents is oh, available on Amazon it. Prime. <laughs> and of course, hard. what? And Good plug. I need to watch this. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm full of plugs. <laughs> that came out wrong. <laughs> yeah. The Temple of the Killer Tiger Monkeys. Yeah. Wow. Are you reading this? Did you write it, or or is this just a book stand? I just did a a, a, a voiceover for it. Um, I think it's going to be a cartoon, and uh, my my Ooh. character plays uh, a high priest of hell who has decided on earth that he's going to be um, a baby panda with eight arms. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's very funny. How, how, how blue can I go here? So um, go one, blue of humans, you like. what? one of the humans he talks to um, says, oh, I, 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 I won't see you when I die because I will obviously be going up there. And my character says, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 you're definitely coming down here. And then he says, no, no, I've been very good. I've, I've worked really hard. You know, I, I do good things in life. And my character says, oh, so actually the reason people go to hell, it's nothing to do with all the good things you do. It is to do with the amount you masturbate. <laughs> Every time you masturbate, an angel dies. <laughs> oh, no. And you have masturbated 187,000 times. <laughs> You're going down there. <laughs> so this isn't going to be on network <laughs> sorry, sorry, BBC. <laughs> uh, but it's been very tough on people in our profession yeah. if they, you know, are still doing that. I mean... Um, and it's, but you have to keep hoping that hopefully uh, we'll all come out the other end of this. Hopefully. Real life horror story. Have you been able but, to do any outdoor shows, theater, theatrically wise? Simon? No. Uh, me? No, no. Mm, uh, no. To be honest, I haven't done any theater for a few years. Um, I've been trying to concentrate on learning how to do film. <laughs> well, I understand. I mean, we we all filmed. Um, we, I finished in January. It seems like you know ten years ago. Another dark ditties presents another plug. Um, shamelessly charting the work of both myself and Simon and Jim Dry and a bunch of other wonderful wonderful actors. I need to watch this. It's called. Uh, it'll be coming out soon. Called Dad. Um, and I'm not sure when that is. With the, obviously, post production has been um, snafu'd up. Is that the right word? Um, Dad. I like the logo, the poster. Yeah, and that's Very that's cool. fabulous. That that's just a cracking script. And you two are in this together. Yeah. Well, I'm in a, the opening scene. I've always. Oh, thank you. I've always <laughs> been. Um, um, yeah, I always managed to 
with the Dark Ditties Presents die in the, by page 18, which is fine with me, because I hadn't actually done any acting in a long time, having moved into writing serial killer books and horror stories and scripts. So um, it was great to do the offer, which was the first one of Dark Ditties. Oh, you're Ditties. doing stuff, which is fantastic. Yeah, but that was a couple of years ago, but it had Simon, had um, Ken Cranham in it, and Oliver Smith and myself, and Nicholas Vince. So but big Hellraiser um, presence in that. I remember Nicholas Spence from the Walmart weekend. Yes. He was there, yes. I remember I was in my comedy club and you guys asked me for a good place to walk to for sushi. And I walked outside and David Naughton walks out to join you from American Werewolf in London. Oh yeah, yeah. And I said, are you walking with them? And he said, yes. And I said, stay off the moors. And as a nerdy little horror fan, it was the greatest moment of my life. <laughs> I bet he did. Is that when we walked into the sushi restaurant, everybody suddenly stopped talking and turned and looked at us? Is that a picture that was recently, was that, that was Pete Atkins there too? Because Karen Valentine actually just put up a picture of us at a sushi restaurant. And we were all there, and I, I think David Naughton was there, and Pete Atkins, and and all of us. I think Doug was there too. And um, do you remember that, Simon? Yes, yes, I do. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if that was that. I think it was that one, actually. Yeah, something a bit fishy about it. A bit fishy about it, about sushi. That was great. Where's I, my drum set? <laughs> wow, for being in comedy. I just totally walked, uh, explained your joke like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, you see, I, folks, it was funny because, because sushi, sushi has fish in it. Sushi, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it also has, you know, seaweed and, and little chicken bits, perhaps. You're in a church. You're an opera singer. Belt it out. Okay, I'll, I'll do. Um, Don't break my screen. So since I'm in the church, I'll do a little bit of Schubert's Ave Maria, okay? Cool. Okay, here we go. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Maria gratia Maria gratia plena, Ave, Ave Dominus, Dominus tercum. We'll end it there. Because, you know, you guys never got to be in the Inside the Actor Studio show. And I think we could ask you guys the questions. Oh, okay. You know, after reading these questions, I would watch Inside the Actor's Studio every every time it was on, and I don't really like these questions anymore, but I'm going to ask them anyway. I love James Lipton. I adore I, I think love he those shows. Love oh, he was yeah. fantastic. Okay, Barbie and Simon, what is your favorite word? Mm. Moist. <laughs> I feel like that's the okay. least. It's a dead heat. Okay. I, I can never do that. I can never. What's your favorite? I, I love copacetic and I love salubrious, but the word I use the most is fabulous. <laughs> and and Barbie and I both like to use the word martini. Martini. Least favorite word. Oh. For least some favorite word. I know a lot of people would say moist is their least favorite word. <laughs> but Simon's outside the box. The cube even. Outside the cube. That's your, That's the movie of Simon's life, I, Simon Bamford outside the cube. Okay, do you need more time to, to think? Because I've got a couple. Yeah, you go. Go, go for go. it. Okay. Um, again, I can't choose just one. Judgmental and didactic. Because oh, didactic. people who are judgmental and didactic piss me off. 
Well, it's better to be pissed off than pissed on, I've heard. No. <laughs> that depends on your sexual proclivities, my darling. <laughs> Um, sorry, that went, oh, gee, <laughs> where did that come from? Never knock it till you try it, is what I said. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, so mine would be hate, which is a hate. very overused word. Hate. hate this and hate that, and they don't, people don't hate things. Hate's such a oh. strong word and it's so overused. Unless you're oh, yes. Slovenian, well, Slovenian's passionate people. And we hate many things. <laughs> no? Christmas decorations. I hate the Christmas decorations. Husbands. Melania, calm down. It's just decorations. You put them up, you take them down. Kind of like the trees. Just get rid of them. It's fine. <laughs> yes, the lovely rose garden. Anyway, no, we must move on and not become political. <laughs> Yes, but if, I think if you want peace on earth, we should we need to stop political posts on social media. I just I, I just <laughs> want everybody. pizza on earth. I mean, I have so many strong beliefs, but pizza on earth is definitely one of my favorite. <laughs> yes. beliefs. I think so, but with or without pepperoni. Take, um, politics off social media, even um, even for a month before a, for, before an election, it would be. Did you say terrifying. football? <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> yeah, take take politics off a month before football, <laughs> and then they can just kick the shit out of that ball, and then it'll be fine. Why do you think it was invented? They were playing football in Greece, ancient Greece. <laughs> think about it. You know, it's That's all these. I, I actually hate watching football. I think it's really boring. But I like watching the World Cup because all, all these countries are playing, and you think they're playing. Football, they're not killing each other. That's nice. That is Plus, nice. Well, ancient Greece, they were all naked, so that probably helped. <laughs> all that running and the little bobbling would not be good. <laughs> not very aerodynamic. <laughs> okay, here's something I don't know if we want to know the answer to or we do. What turns you on? <sighs> Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Martini. Martini. <laughs> Good yeah. answer. What turns you off? Hate. Liver. <laughs> oh no, you've never had a liver in an Italian restaurant in red wine sauce. It's so delicious. When my mother used to cook it for me because I was a bit anemic as a child, it was like a hockey puck. She cooked it to the consistency of a hockey puck. Uh, but no livers, but uh, hey, everybody has their own thing. But um, what just, I was thinking of my liver, off, my liver after the martini. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say general turn-ons are, are any kind of delicious cocktail like margaritas and martinis. Um, I was going to say, you know, very inventive fantasy action movies, but they <laughs> don't. Oh, yeah. Because I love great, movies, you know, they're saving my brain. Oh, yeah, it's very cathartic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, turn offs. I, I, what turn offs? Barbie, when you started talking about liver, you became my Jewish mother. Just so. <laughs> you haven't had liver at an Italian restaurant. It's fantastic. The way they cook it. In the red wine. You need hey, the red wine sauce. Hey, no, no. no so. What is your favorite curse word? Fuck. I don't know. There we go. Does it get She went right there? for it. See, see, Jason Jason asked me all these questions yesterday to see whether or not I thought these would be lame or not, and I love them. Uh, yeah. my, my favorite swear word was Liberty Gibbet. Oh. How dare you? There are children watching. <laughs> that's that's, that's really cute. I, I must admit, as a woman, I do use the C word a lot. Carrot stick, Justin. She means carrot stick. Come on. <laughs> all right, all right, I thought she meant community. Said, is see you next Tuesday. Yes. Think about it. I say that all yes. the time. When I'm watching CNN, that's the word that pops out of my mouth. The most. <laughs> my, my I heard parents, a lot watching English when television. When I was growing up, my parents, um, their swear words were damn and bloody. Mm -hmm. And uh, they always had to apologize to us after they'd said them, which I always thought was a bit lame. <laughs> 
then, but then it was not so wholesome. Yes, yeah. yeah. so close. Well, I, I remember the first time I said dad, damn, in front of my um, lapsed Roman Catholic mother who always regretted that she lapsed and wished she'd raised us as Catholics. And I just, I thought I was expecting this like kaboom on my head and nothing, you know, but my father's favorite curse word was treacle. Um, I, oh, and chicken fat. He say chicken fat all the time too. Oh, chicken fat. You get your yes. chicken fat ass upstairs to your bedroom right now and go to bed. Yes, dear You're dad. You're Canadian, right? What? You're Canadian. Oh, yeah, that's, right? that's another problem. Is that we're also nice? That's, that's you know, we don't say that. fuck. We say chicken fat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What what profession would you, other than your own, would you like to attempt? Ooh, architecture. I'd oh, love that's a good architecture. one. Yeah. Yeah. Great architecture is so exciting. Um, really is. I'll give you that. Well, I, I was we were asked this question in a theater in Hamburg in a midnight showing of Hellbound about 15 years ago, or more than that. And they said, what would have you been your profession? And I dreamt of being this since I was eight. And I used to work out scenarios on how to accomplish these things lying in bed at night. And that was to be an international assassin. Oh my God, you are twisted so I love it. No, it's just nine years old. That was it. I think it was too many episodes of the man from Uncle, the girl from Uncle, Hawaii Five-O, you know, uh, all these, this, uh, the Avengers, you know, Emma Peel, Jesus, give me that leather jumpsuit. That well, would be great, a badass the role great for you. Thing is that actually Barbie might be an assassin, but none of us would actually know. <laughs> We're in all black. She's in a black room right now. You know, one of my my costumes that I thought would be great. I mean, not necessarily in China. Uh, was uh, dress up as a nun because you don't expect. You just see the uniform. Justin, we have to write an action film for her. <laughs> That's I, I absolutely agree. Yeah, uh, we'll 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 call it the nun, and uh, the the tagline will be some habits are hard to break. Oh <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, what profession would you not like to do? Um, I don't think I'd like to work in refuge, as in the trash. In Trash. Yes, as in trash, as in going around on the big truck, especially in the summer. I think that must be quite a hard job to do. And I have great oh, admiration yes. for those guys that do it. Yeah, I have a very sensitive um, smell thing. <laughs> what? Nose? It's a nose, yes. A, I, I like smell things. No. <laughs> oh, I think collecting garbage is a really... Yeah, that's. A, I would love to ride on the back of the truck, but not for any. I mean, if you wanted to pay me to ride in the back of a truck, that would be a blast. Yeah, but we leave it at that. As long as but, I don't. Like, you apart. don't know what people throw away. Oh, you don't wow. know what kind of icky things they put in their garbage, and you might grab that bag, and it might come zapping through and stab you through your glove. But but you Barbie, you sold me. But, I'm not doing it then. But, Wait, wait, Jason, no, hang on, though. But Barbie, in the same breath, you don't know what people throw away. One day you're going to pick up a bag and be like, what's in here? You open up. It's all Fabergé eggs. They're just getting rid of them. So wow. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. See, I always think of myself as a positive person, but there I am looking on the negative. She, would you convince me not to take a you're trash welcome. job? Um, yeah. And finally... If heaven exists, we'll start with Simon. What would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> Is this a joke? What That's the last question. question. <laughs> Have you ever watched Inside the Actors Studio? That's his last question. That's his last question. <laughs> oh, is it? I so, don't know. I haven't seen so, it. So, <laughs> so, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you my answer. Because remember, Jason <laughs> asked me all these yesterday. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And uh, so Jason asked what, you know, when you arrive at the pearly gates, what do you expect for God to say to you? And uh, uh, my expectation is that he'll look at me and say, huh, you're here. That was good. <laughs> I got my answer. I got my answer. Yes. 
Sure. What is it? Martini or margarita? <laughs> the alternative would be, boy, have you found the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> So they would probably say, told you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Simon would say, is this a joke? I saw a really interesting documentary, just on switching it off, uh, uh, called uh, Dante and the Invention of Hell. And, you know, Dante Alighieri wrote The Divine Comedy. And mm -hmm. his descriptions of hell, they'd never been there before. A, also, he was a best-selling novelist because he was the first guy to write in Italian rather than um, Latin back in the 14th century. But all these artists were so inspired, they started making all these these depictions of hell. And before, it would, might have been a hot place or a cold place. But in the Bible, there's very few descriptions of it. But it's a very interesting seeing all this brilliant artwork that was created yeah. because yeah. of Dante's, you know, um, Inferno, not because well, the of the those, Bible or anything. Representing hell is beautiful. Sorry? The artwork representing hell is absolutely beautiful. Well, it looks like a fun place. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Actually, my favorite depiction of hell is in the film Deconstructing Harry. And they're all sort of, they're all sort of, all these naked women and lots of margaritas being drunk. <laughs> and Billy Crystal is Satan. My favorite description description of hell is um, uh, Jerry Springer, the musical. Have, have any of you seen that? Yes. No. Hell I actually, I, I actually sadly had to turn down the role of God in that. No, I I know it's just that the timing didn't work out. I was actually just leaving for a tour of Prague, and, and they just happened oh. to overlap, and I would have missed too many dates. Oh, but yeah. I would have loved to have been God in that in that production. Such a funny show. Oh, it's I mean, a very funny it. show. I forgot. I've heard of it. Good. No, it's, it's great it's music. Good. It's good, but you know what? Prague is one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Oh, it is. It's Truly, really lovely. Yeah, I, 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 it was very, very difficult to leave. I mean, it was, it was a lovely tour. I, mm -hmm. we spent half of it in Prague. We spent the other half of it in Salzburg, which was lovely to get to sing a Mozart mass in the, uh, in the Salzburg Cathedral, where he, where Mozart was baptized. So it's just mm -hmm. really, really something. But uh, again, this is not my show. So let's stop talking about that. <laughs> stop talking about you. <laughs> uh, I can't thank you enough for taking time out of your lives to come on here. I just wanted to say very quickly, doing a little. Um, That's what I was just going to uh, say. Do you have anything you love to plug? Yeah. My beautiful book, Voices of the Damned, which is an illustrated um, book of my short horror stories. Here's Sister Celise. Every, every story has been illustrated by top authors of the genre. It's actually going to go sadly out of print on Halloween. Oh, no. Yeah, but you can go to SST Publications um, and order a copy before the 31st. Um, I've got other plans, and hopefully it will come back in a different form. Of course, as you can see, Clive very kindly gave me, and there are two illustrations of Clive's in here as well. The, so, oh, yeah, the cover is beautiful. Oh, it's it's gorgeous. I even use it as my phone back. If you would like to know what she is up to, make sure that you stay up to date by going to barbiewild.com. Yeah, all of social also, media is up there. Yeah, and, and all my social media links are up there. I'm pretty crap at um, Instagram and Twitter, but I haven't been posting a lot to the general public on my Facebook, but that will change. Um, uh, but you know, but most news, if there's news, it's on my Facebook page, which is facebook.com Barbie Wild. And don't forget, Halloween is the witching hour. So if you want to buy my disgusting, sick, fabulous cocktail of horror and art, you've only got a few days left. Yeah. And to be honest, you're not spending your money on candy this year, are you? Is, ha is Halloween kind of canceled in the States? No trick or treat? No, it's, it's going on here. I have a big Halloween town. Oh, wait, oh it's, okay. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, th 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 we figured if all the kids are in costume, they're wearing masks. That's true. They're not coming in the house. 
No. <laughs> You're just it's giving the candy stickers. Candy. Poison so, candy, that's all. <laughs> so so my, my wife and I, we're actually setting up a, a, a board out, outside that has clothespins attached to it with little baggies of candy. Oh. So the kids, so the kids can come up and they can just take a a, a baggie. But, and you can uh, you know, shout, shout at them from the window. Yeah, Happy Halloween! <laughs> we think you look like a pretty princess. <laughs> Bye. Oh my God! Uh, I might use that as my ringtone over Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. I mean, is there anything that you would like to plug before we sign off? Yes, with with um, Barbie here. Um, Dad is coming up, I think, shortly after Halloween. Um, it will be um, released on Amazon Prime, I think. Um, Diddy, and, Diddy, uh, Diddy's? Pardon? What's it called? Um, Dad, Dark Ditties presents... Dark Dad. Ditties. Diddy Ditties. <laughs> yeah, Ditties with a D. <laughs> Dark Ditties. <laughs> the other it's all about annunciation. Ditties. Yes. Dark ditties. I, I, there's one other little pluggy thing I want to do. I'm so sorry. Is that I also have a book called The Venus Complex, which is a diary of the serial killer. It's now available as an auto, audio book narrated by the king of pain himself, Doug Bradley. So check that out on Amazon. Fantastic. And also, um, I've, I've just had a film released in... Oh, I've just had a film. I have a tiny, tiny, tiny cameo in a film called The Haunting of Margam Castle, which is already released in the States. So I've just started working on my website because when I went to look at my old one, um, it had lapsed. My new online presence will be simonbamford.online. Oh, you can do that? Fantastic. Oh, Definitely. Excellent. Yeah, so um, I'm just working on it at the moment. It's driving okay. me crazy. Very cool. <laughs> oh, it's so, oh, it's so boring doing websites. That's why I just oh, have everything directed to Facebook. You type it in and then you wait 10 minutes for them to go, Okay, I've processed that now. So you type yeah. in another line. It's like, oh, come on. Oh, I, I did mine for a rather cool. cheapy one that costs a fortune and it's not that great. You, you Listen, guys, I'm... Two digits and then it deletes six paragraphs. It's like, no! Oh. No! May I just say thank you so much. This Bobby has been... Has to go because her DIY um, project, which was actually came from the um, assassin work she was doing earlier today. She was yeah. melting some of the bodies in an acid bath, and sadly, it has splashed onto the tiles and ruined it's them. It's made such Sorry. a mess. Check your <laughs> mail. In general, you read, read too. She did, did the same method, and she didn't get any acid anywhere. I mean, she's my, she's my you know, Helen Mirren and Red retired extremely <laughs> Exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. Bye. Well, Barbie, Simon, thank you so much. Enjoy. Check out my, uh, Simon's movies on Amazon Prime and buy Barbie's book. Look at her website, barbiewild.com, and find simonbamford.online. And don't forget Dark Diddy's Presents. They're all Dark, fabulous. Dark Diddy's yes. Presents, Amazon Prime. So, so I, I, I have one last question before we, we leave. Okay. Barbie, Simon, mm -hmm. would you do this again? Definitely. Okay, In a great. Minute, minute. <laughs> such yes. a fun time thank you both so much okay thank you, thank you guys thank you, you guys Bye. 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 Nice picture, Simon. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one is from um, the from the band, the Dexys Midnight Runners. Oh yeah. Um, one mm. of the musicians painted it, and this it's, one. It's a painting. Wow. That's yeah, fantastic. Yeah. It's not really a person playing a big guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's a window. <laughs> no, no, we it's thought it was a photograph. <laughs> I did. I mean, I did. It could have been a photograph taken very closely to the. To <laughs> Thank the you, Jason. Thank no, you. You're welcome. I'm not getting. You're still not going out. Oh no no no. Good for you. No, I'm. I'm. Out.
I, 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 I just, um, I'm a little bit of um, obsessive compulsive just I can actually see the virus, sort of. <laughs> not really. I'm not crazy, but it's like it could be there. So it's just better for me. I have gone out, of course, and taken. Bobby, Bobby, Sorry. Bobby, could you look very closely at the three of us and just see if you can see the virus anywhere near, <laughs> like around us, or around yeah, is that it in the corner? <laughs> it's it's all over this lamp. Do you see it? Oh, it's all no. over the place. You really you altered today because we have this major repair we have to do because it, and I hate doing DIY. So if I'm a bit odd, that's why. If you're a bit odd. Odd. I Am I being odd? I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. That's more to it. I, I love that. Yes, it's, it's all the DIY stuff. So if that's why I'm being odd, not the fact that I can see COVID or anything <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the fact, it's, it's, my, it's my DIY. <laughs> it's DIY it drives me, me in this book that's actually propping up my, my laptop, A Thousand Women of Horror. And I'm there. You better um, be after and, that number. Yeah. So um, that's that's. That's pretty cool, but I can't show it to you because it's propping up my computer, so I'm not looming down, showing a million chins. So, oh, I can uh, show you. Is that a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> so it's very loosey goosey. Even though know it's called "Hi, I'm Jason," Justin's taken over as the host, especially when I had a Xanax to calm the anxiety from watching the news. Took <laughs> <laughs> over. I so. laughed. But I know exactly how you feel. <laughs> I watch too much CNN. I do. Yes. And it's like, oh, oh my god! So, talking <laughs> of the news, when do your your clocks haven't changed yet, do they? No, no, it's it's no. nothing personal. Um, it's just next week. We, we Is start. that to coincide with the election that it will suddenly get very dark? after the election. <laughs> that is very poetic. I like the way you're saying that. Here, here in America, we have the best clocks. We have the greatest clocks. They're, <laughs> the, they're fantastic clocks. We have the biggest clocks. There's other countries. I think other countries have clocks. Not as good as ours. Are they it's hugely? Not, huge they're hugely. They're the greatest clocks you know, you've I, ever I seen. I have to tell you something. Oh. That my mother was Slovenian, so I just, you know, and so is Melania. So I'm doing very bad Slovenian accent, which I learned from Mission Impossible episodes from 60s. Ah, yes, you and your entire Mission Impossible force will be killed by Colonel Zarkov tomorrow. <laughs> I'm glad, Jason. You you said about they were you pointed to the clocks because I wasn't sure if that's what Justin was saying. That we have big clocks. <laughs> oh yes, oh, we have both. Yes. I mean both, both. What's well, I, have, I, well, mean? I have very little hand, so it looks enormous. <laughs> <laughs> well, bye. Okay. And Jason decided to leave us because, yeah. uh, hey, <laughs> fuck us, right? Yes. <laughs> I might leave this in because okay. <laughs> it's his show. I mean, come on. I have his logo on my head.